I want to thank those, all those who have um, who have given and and those who have given over the last few months as we've been running these meetings. And you know, these meetings uh, really kicked off um, in June 2020 when uh, God started giving me prophetic words for the United States of America. And uh, there's a lot of confusion across the body at the moment about um, how those prophetic words, not just from me, but from many, many much more well-known prophets than myself, um, how those words have played out. So I want to just uh, backtrack to June 2020. And in, uh, on June the 10th, I prophesied a number of things um, regarding the church in the United States of America in the lead up to the 2020 presidential election. And there was an emphasis that there would be a series of shocks coming to America and that that series of shocks was going to serve to awaken the remnant church in the United States. I prophesied that on June the 10th. And uh, since then, we've seen riots all across the country. We saw Washington and the surrounds of the of the White House in particular almost shut down. Um, we saw uh, Portland, the heart of the city, overrun by protesters and actually taken over. Uh, one of the most horrific things I saw was Bibles being burnt in Portland publicly. We saw statues being pulled down. The, um, the history of the United States of America maligned and the national identity being compromised. We saw more gun violence involving police. Um, and all of this was in the lead up to the presidential election. Now, on June the 25th, and these videos are available on our YouTube channel, so you can go back and check the things that I prophesied. On June the 25th, I prophesied that at the end of this series of shock waves, there would be one more giant shock that would stop the nation in its tracks and that America would pause and say, do we really want to go down this path? Now, that specific word about that final shock was fulfilled in devastating fashion with what happened um, at the US Capitol building a few days ago. And the reason that I'm sharing these testimonies of fulfilled prophecy with you today is because many of you watching this today will be saying perhaps in your heart that I got it wrong about the US 2020 presidential election. And I prophesied very specifically on November the 7th that Donald Trump will win a second term and during that second term will enact laws that will protect the clear clarion call of the gospel. That's what I prophesied. Since then, we have seen amazing things happen in the U.S. Uh, Joe Biden, it would appear, is about to be inaugurated as U.S. president. There have been allegations of election fraud. There's been the storming of the Capitol building. All of these things have yet to um, fully play out in terms of the revelation of what's behind them. We've seen the banning of a sitting U.S. president from Twitter, Facebook and YouTube. Um, we've seen social media apps such as Parler removed from their hosting and a second impeachment, impeachment attempt is, has been launched. So I thought um, before I address where we're at at the moment, um, I want to share with you something from a past fulfilled prophecy. Now, um, our American friends are probably not very familiar with the game of uh, rugby league. Rugby league is kind of like rugby union. If you're familiar with rugby, you'll kind of know the sport. It's a bit like uh, NFL in a sense that there's a lot of collisions but it's a lot faster than, than NFL and I would suggest probably a little bit more brutal. And there's only a few nations across the face of the earth that play this particular game. Australia is one of them and Australia for many years was at the peak of that sport when they had, national, when they had international matches. And the reason that um, I'm speaking about this is that there's a, 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 an island nation called Tonga that also plays um, rugby league and in uh, November, on November the 10th, 2018, we were in the lead up to an international match between Australia and Tonga. And uh, I gave a prophecy at that time that Tonga would defeat Australia by a margin of between four and ten points as a sign that revival would break out in Tonga. That's a very specific uh, prophecy, correct? 
that weekend, just a couple of days after my prophetic word, there was a test match played. Australia played Tonga and Australia absolutely annihilated Tonga. So I had obviously got it wrong. In my heart, I knew I've got this wrong. I openly repented that I had got it wrong. Now, 12 months later, the two teams played again, and this time Tonga defeated Australia by four points. At the time, the result of that match was regarded as a miracle because Australia was regarded as a first-tier nation in the sport, whereas Tonga were a couple of uh, rungs below. And uh, it was the most unexpected result in the history of International Rugby League. And it's the equivalent, for those of you watching from the US, I would say to you that it's the equivalent of a, uh, a college football side taking on the Super Bowl champions in a Super Bowl and winning. It was that big of an upset. And so um, Tonga defeated Australia by four points. Um, but what I got wrong was the year. And so skip forward to June 2020 and I began receiving prophetic words about the US and in particular the church. But I should have learned my lesson from the past. The lesson that I should have learned was that God is not subject to any time frame or expectation that we impose upon him. I didn't hear the Lord say to me, Donald Trump will win the 2020 US election. I just heard that he would be re-elected and that something would happen in his second term. When I got the word that Donald Trump would be uh, re-elected, I should have asked more questions of the Lord. So I want to confess before you today and repent that I am guilty of the sin of presumption. I presumed that my maturity of gifting in the prophetic was greater than it was. I want to publicly repent of that. I've done a lot of soul searching over the last few weeks and I've watched other prophetic voices either hold the line of what they heard from the Lord or repent altogether. And I honor both of those positions. It is a tumultuous time and I do not believe that we have reached the end of this particular road on January the 20th. God is not subject to our expectations or our timelines or time frames. And I also want to point out a couple of things because, um, you know, I've had hundreds and hundreds of thousands of views. If I added them all up, it would be over a million since June 2020 of the prophetic words that I have released. And if I had to count... Uh, the number of times that people have said, you're a false prophet and quoted Deuteronomy 18.20 at me, um, I would be a rich man. If I had a dollar for every time I read that in the comments on our YouTube channel, which I've just deleted and deleted and deleted because it's a very poor understanding of Scripture. Um, so I want to point out a couple of things about prophecy, um, particularly to those who would seem to want to hold new covenant prophets to old covenant standards and judgments of prophecy. Let me sum it up like this. Under the old covenant, you judge the prophet. Under the new covenant, you judge the prophecy. Where do we see that? In Deuteronomy 18.20, under the old covenant. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that prophet shall die. I've had that curse spoken against me multiple times over the last couple of months. But in 1 Corinthians 13.9, we start to see a revelation of what new covenant prophecy is about because in 1 Corinthians 9, Paul tells us we know in part and we prophesy in part. In 1 Corinthians 14 verse 29, it says, Let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge. I invite you to judge the prophetic words, but stop releasing judgment against me. I am not a false prophet. A false prophet is somebody who does not speak forth the heart of God. And in 1 Thessalonians, we see this. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophecies. Test all things and hold fast what is good. I would submit to you that nearly everything that I've prophesied over the last six months has played out in one fashion or another. And some of, that prophet, some of the prophetic that I've released is not yet complete. If, uh, if we despise prophecies, 
We quench the spirit. And if there was ever a time in the history of the church that we need the spirit, it's now. Do I want to repent of the specifics of my prophetic word? I will state that there is an aspect of this that I missed, that my revelation was incomplete and still is, and I presumed upon the maturity of my gifting. I don't believe that we have heard the end of the matter. I know that won't satisfy a lot of people, but in my heart, I know that my primary responsibility is to serve the Lord before I serve people. And if I believe with all my heart that the Lord has given me a word, it's my responsibility to speak it out unless he tells me not to. My life since I came to the Lord in 1996 has had a firm foundation of repentance and rest assured I would have no trouble repenting and saying I'm wrong if that's how it plays out. Having got that out of the way, I believe the Lord has given me another word for the US. So I invite you to judge this word and uh, let me launch into what I have sensed the Lord saying to me. Uh, because I watched the storming of the U.S. Capitol in horror. It was early in the morning my time. I came into the studio here and I flicked on the news and there was people invading the Capitol building. And then I saw some very unusual things which I believe have extreme prophetic significance to the United States at the moment. I saw a photo of a self-confessed shaman, a man named Jake Angeli. He's been all over the news. He's the guy with the buffalo hat on with the two horns, the tattoos and the loincloth and all that. Very, very strange young man. And uh, I saw an interview with him where he talked about he was a shaman. And so this, this man is steeped in witchcraft. And I saw that during the invasion of the Capitol building, he assumed the Senate dais, the place from which... Uh, Things are spoken, pronouncements are made um, in the Capitol building. And I heard the Lord say as I looked at that photo that the voice of witchcraft is attempting to assume authority over your nation. And then when Representative Cleaver opened Congress with a prayer in the name of Brahma and closed with Amen and a woman... He said the words, amen, and a woman. I saw that there is now an entrenched syncretism. That's the worship of multiple gods in the heart of America that only another great awakening can effectively deal with. And so then as I sat with the Lord over the following couple of days in the lead up uh, to this morning, I just want to share with you um, what I believe the Lord is speaking now. In my prophetic word where I said there would be one final shock um, that would serve to, uh, to stop the nation in its tracks as it has in recent days, I also said that uh, when that final shock appeared that the, uh, the remnant, uh, I don't want to go back over all the specifics of that prophetic word, you, you can see it on, the, uh, on that video from the 25th of June, but uh, basically when that shock wave hit, the remnant bride who was standing between the giants of fear and hatred would finally hit bedrock and would now be standing on a firm foundation. And I heard the Lord say to me yesterday morning that bedrock has been reached. I heard him say that for those of my remnant who have cried out for their nation, the shock wave of Capitol Hill has brought home the stark reality of how severe the crisis is in the United States of America. Those who have blithely stood to one side, content to be observers, are now beginning to understand the severity of this crisis. But the source of the crisis is not in the political realm, it is in the spiritual realm. Do not look to politicians for a way out and anybody who has deified Donald Trump in the process of wanting to see America change needs to take him off that pedestal and put Jesus there instead do not look to politicians for a way out and I heard the Lord say I have used men in the past and will again as instruments of my justice but my justice is not man's justice and then I heard the Lord say, I have sent my prophets of repentance to the, to the nation of the United States for generation after generation. But the nation has ignored and even despised them. 
bewitched by a false prosperity, the nation has turned away from me. But now as the nation stops to consider the set, the, the, uh, But now as the nation stops to consider the ground it is on, there is still my clear clarion call. You have sown, you have been sowing as a nation and you are reaping. If you sow to the flesh, you will reap of the flesh. There has not been enough sowing of the spirit, but the American church is beginning to awaken and has been awakening. There is revival in the air. The enemy did not breach your walls, I heard the, say, the Lord say. You invited him in and he has established strongholds over every aspect of American life. But these strongholds are not as strong as the blood of my son Jesus. Where are those, I hear the Lord asking, where are those who would now stand strong in the spirit and take authority over the deceiving spirits who have a stranglehold on the soul of America? Where are those whose identity is rooted and established in Jesus who would now root out and pull down, destroy and throw down so that planting and building can take place? Where are those who would rebuild the old ruins, who would raise up the former desolations, who would repair the ruined cities, the desolation of many generations? The enemy thinks he has won. Do not be among those who passively observe this calamity drawing closer and closer until it's too late. And I heard the Lord ask, has my arm been shortened? Am I deaf to the cry of my bride? No, I'm not. Stand in the gap and repent for the sins of your nation. It is not too late. I heard him say it again. It is not too late. My Mercy triumphs over my judgment and my eyes are running to and fro across your nation, looking for those whose hearts are loyal to me so that I can show myself strong on your behalf. It is time for the church to break open the alabaster jar of worship in spirit and in truth. As you say, you must do. I believe with all my heart that we are in a season of spiritual warfare for the soul of America. And we must recognize the season we are in for what it is. The eviction of Jezebel and witchcraft from the soul of America is heaven's priority and must become the focal point of the church in the United States. If the, not, if the church does not rise in our governmental authority and tear down these principalities and powers, the nation will continue to slide away into apostasy. I believe God is saying that there is a two-year time frame around this particular season that we are now in because I heard the Lord say that the 118th Congress, which begins in 2023, will end in disaster. And I'm, I'm asking the Lord, I'm saying, what do you mean? The, the, the 118th Congress, which begins in 2023, it's a two-year term of Congress, will end in disaster. But I didn't hear him telling me any further than that. I'm not going to make any assumptions. But I heard the words, all bets are off. And I heard the Lord say that no one can predict what will happen at that point from a natural point of view. You are going to need prophetic maturity. You're going to need to be listening to the Lord. You're going to need to be standing strong on the word as this continues to play out in the life of the United States of America. I heard the Lord saying that political pundits, those who professionally analyze what happens in the political realm, will be scratching their heads and be at a loss as to what might happen next. And I have this, uh, this overwhelming sense in my spirit, man, that Joe Biden will not serve out his first term as U.S. president. 
I have no further revelation on that. Just this conviction in my spirit. I'm not prophesying any disaster over him. I just believe that for whatever reason, he will not serve out that term and that that will have a profound effect on what happens in the next two years. I also, sorry, in the next four years, but I believe that there's a, there's, there's a specific point two years from now that's going to be very critical. I also believe that in these next two years, the Lord is saying that the fruit of your spiritual warfare over your nation over the next two years will be an invasion of the church into the new age. In other words, the gospel is going to invade new age strongholds and those who are saved out of new age beliefs will become champions for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And finally, I heard the Lord say, it's not too late. It's not too late. So I want to thank you, Lord, um, that you're moving, that you haven't forgotten the United States of America, nor have you turned your back on your people. But that there is a, a massive correction taking place in the body of Christ across the world. And I, I just want to pray into that. Luke, uh, Lucas, if you can put everybody up on the screen for me, I just want to pray for you guys. Um, whether you're in the United States of America or not, I want to tell you this affects everybody on the planet because America for generations has stood as a, a beacon of hope, democracy, justice, all these different things. It's not a perfect nation by any means at all. But there is something about the United States of America that has held back the powers of darkness across the face of the earth, and America's compromise affects the entire earth. And so, Lord, I would just pray for those who are, who are interceding, who are believing, who are standing in the gap, who are tearing down strongholds, who are learning to operate in great governmental authority in the spirit, Spiritual realm. I pray for your ecclesia, Lord, who are standing in hope and belief and strength in the spiritual realm, that now, Lord, an impartation would be released to them of your Holy Spirit so that fire is released into their bones, Lord, into their very bones, that there is fire coming upon those who would stand for truth, who would stand for the justice of the Lord. I thank you for that fire that's being released to them now lord in the mighty name of jesus lord fill them with your holy spirit to overflow so that father god as they pray as they intercede as they worship as they witness as they do all the things that you have called your bride to do they do so in great power in great authority lord that they do so with the sense that you are coming soon and the time is short and that america must rise from the ashes of what is going on at the moment that god still has a plan for the nation thank you lord release it now lord that fire into people's hearts in jesus name in jesus mighty name in jesus name in jesus name oh, I thought he had a